Hi, everybody. So um, I'm going to talk to you guys today and about what it, relationships a little bit. And I titled this, If You Want Superman, Then Be Wonder Woman, or vice versa. So I'm 23, and I'm single. And at least once a week, when I'm walking around athletics or hanging out with some of the athletes, I'm asked on a regular basis, Mo, that's what everyone calls me. Mo, why are you single? Like, they make you feel like, you know, like, what's wrong with you? Like, and I'm going to be honest, in the beginning, you used to bother me. You know, it's like a weekly reminder of like, hey, you're going to be like a four-year-old cat lady. Thanks. <laughs> you know? But, um, and I always get to the Mo, you're not dating material. You're the kind of girl that men want to marry. But, you know, you have to date somebody and marry them, so that doesn't make sense. So, I want to look into that. What is the kind of person that is marriage material, but not dating material. So we're going to get into the word in Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Um, we're going to start at 21. It says, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle in anything of the kind, yet so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I'm applying it to Christ and the church. Each of you, however, should love his wife as himself, and a wife should respect her husband. And thinking about this, it's definitely important to think and pray about your future spouse, and if you are in a marriage, your spouse is at that time. Well, not forever, but your spouse. And um, I was thinking about that... <coughs> We always have specific standards for the man or woman that we want to marry, but how often do we focus on ourselves as being that standard, of being that person, that we need to self-develop into that person that we want to be with. Um, so the idea of something we use in athletics is you ex inspect what you expect. So you need to inspect yourself in order of what you're going to be expecting in others. Um, I feel like when we read this passage, the typical response in like, all the feminists start rallying and they get super excited, like they hate the word submit, that it's like this horrible word, you know? But there's so much more to focus on in this passage than just the word subject or submit. And if you break down these words, it means way different intentions than what our society and our generation has decided it means. Um, first of all, I think it's important to notice at the end of verse 22, it says, as you are to the Lord. This form of submission is not new to us because we're already doing it in our daily lives to the Lord. We're supposed to submit ourselves as wives to our husbands the way we already know how. So it's not anything that is new that we need to learn. So this would imply then that you don't become a wife when you find your husband, but you only become his wife when he finds you. You're already a wife. That's who you are. You should already be practicing the same way of life. It's not the function of a ring that makes you a wife, but it's the presence of your character. That's who you are. So the word says, who who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But a lot of men aren't finding wives, they're finding girlfriends. You know, we need to start presenting ourselves more like women of God and wives rather than just the next best thing. You know, a lot of men, you know, or, sorry, if you carry yourself like a wife, then a husband will find you. If you carry yourself like a girlfriend, then little boys will mess with you. You know, they'll just on to the next one. So, um... If you want a specific standard of a man, then you can carry yourself to the same standard. And men, if you want a woman to submit to you, then you need to make sure that you're worth submitting to. Um, in verse 23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. For the word head in Greek is equivalent to life source or nourishes. The husband is to be the wife's life source, the way Christ is the life source for the church. This is so much more than putting food on the table or putting a roof over the head of your family or wife. Um, men, you're thinking about what it means to bring life to your wife in more ways and spiritually and physically and things like that. So are you capable of that at this time if you're not in a relationship? And those who are, 
is that your, your everyday living? Is that what you're doing? Um, women also, women want worshipers. They want a man with a plan. And that kind of, you know, it rhymes, but, you know, it's real. Women want a man with a plan. That, that's something that's attractive. If you want submission, then you need to have a mission. You need to have a plan. You know, God wants to prosper us, and God wants to put favor on the plans of our lives, but he can't put favor on these plans unless we've created a plan for our life. Um, as well, if you want submission from a woman, then you need to be already doing these things, lining these things up in order that she wants to follow you. It's part of submission. Submission in the Bible is voluntarily. It's not what we think in our minds of submission as like you're a prisoner, right? Uh, verse 28 also tells men to love their wives the way Christ loved the church. Well, Christ died for the church. So God is calling men to be willing to do the same thing for their wives. The injunction to love their wives entails more than emotion. It means placing their interests first, counting the wives better than themselves, and willing to die for her. As men are challenged to do this, women, you need to think about are you worth dying for? Are you living in a way that a man wants to die for you? Right? So are you living in this manner and preparing ahead of time if you're not married? that you're preparing now to be that woman in your marriage. Because again, your wife, when he finds you, because you you just become his wife at that moment. If we focus more on our own self-development and being men who are worth submitting to and women who are worth dying for, then we're focusing on being the best me that we can be. So instead of searching for the next best someone, we need to find the best in ourselves, and that person will come to us. God will want to align us. There's, um, Carl Lentz uses a great metaphor of, for, and he teaches more so a college age group of you're running your race and you're running and you're running and you look up and you're like, oh, hey, like there's this person there. Like, you know, and you start, you kind of find a track. He's like, all right, put your head down and keep running and keep running. And he's like, and you know, a little while later, if they're still there, you know, maybe ask some of your closer friends about them who are around them. And if your lives are lined up, all right, put your head back down and keep running. He's like, eventually your forces are going to align. But if you're too busy about focusing on their lane and what they're doing, you're gonna start getting off your own lane and go start going to where their calling, their calling is instead of your own, where God wants to align you together. Um, it's a crucial time in our lives to be preparing ourselves for the self-development in order to be the husband and wife that are depicted in these verses. If we wanna be these individuals, then we need to prepare ourselves now if we're not married. Um, you need to inspect again your own life in order to expect the traits of your future spouse. As God-fearing men, men and women, these character traits should already be who we are. And um, you, but rather you should already be living the way that the Lord's calling you. Um, as a man, if you want a woman to submit to you, then you need, you must be worth submitting to. The same goes for women. If you want a man to be willing to die for you, then you must be worth dying for. And that's not later when, oh, when I get married later, okay, but that's now. And we need to start living this way the more we go. This is the moral fiber of a godly marriage. So ultimately, again, if you want Superman, then you need to be Wonder Woman. If you want Wonder Woman, then you need to be Superman. So, and close out prayer. And uh, go up next. So, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your, your word that you give to us that we can learn from you and just to know what you're calling us to be. And pray, God, that you would insert these things in our lives, whether we're married now or not, that you prepare us and just that we grow further and grow closer to you as the men and women that you're calling us to be, Father. I pray that you would anoint these words and that they would just carry further in our lives then and take root in everything we do. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen.